it's day 10 and I think I have recovered from the potato misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that you kept it in. I'm glad that you kept it in because I, 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 I know I messaged you and I'm like, I feel like I feel so stupid. I would get it. And then you're like, no, you can't edit that out. It's super funny. And I'm like, I know, but I feel like so stupid. <laughs> you know what we're just keeping it real right and and it's a small sticker it's hard to see well i do need new glasses see that's the thing we do sometimes do things to embarrass ourselves i think we all do that i know to your credit (laughs) to your credit it was a white and blue mug and as soon as you said crock pot i thought of that white and blue crock pot that you later sent me a photo of and was like i thought it was this and i was like yeah like i i i could understand how you were seeing that but you're all like potato soup is that brown <laughs> <I know. laughs> like <It's> stew maybe <laughs> okay we're moving on from that <clears throat> yeah moving on jan okay. moving on but in proper proper order of operations i'm not gonna tell you until after you see the sticker okay what well is- we'll see if you don't tell me because you weren't gonna tell me for wyoming and then you're like <laughs> wyoming. i'll try i'll try to not tell you so we'll see okay we're gonna talk about some other things though so that you're we'll see if it stays in your memory between times probably not Whoosh. it wouldn't if it was me i'd be like it's san francisco wait ah <laughs> Uh, okay let's collect so, ourselves i was grocery shopping the other day and uh i have i have kind of a weird diet i don't i don't eat anything tip generally speaking for the holidays i uh, it's fair game but on a day-to-day basis i eat a ketogenic diet so in order to do that i don't eat flour i don't eat any kind of sugar you know, I don't eat white potatoes. So the potato soup would have been out for me right, anyway. Right, right. Um, but like, so there's eat, a lot of you eat fruit though, right? Just like, uh, every now and then I'll have like an apple. Okay. But you're careful about that. Yeah. I can have berries in general, you know, smallish quantities, yeah, yeah. berries, you know, so you're but, just careful, but, uh, you're careful about your carbs and right. 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 So right. there's a lot of aisles of, of the grocery store. I just don't go down right. because why? It's, you know, it's not for me. So I was shopping the other day and my daughter had asked me to pick something up. So I was in the cereal aisle, which is not what I'm usually in, but I was like, now's my chance. I have to see if they have crackling oat bran in stock. Cause if so, I got to get it now. And so I am prepared. Yay! I am prepared with my crackling oat bran for Christmas. Excellent. So my <laughs> problem now is that so my husband's away for like another week. I have to hide this because if, because, you know, this, this is what it should be called. Crack oat brand <laughs> because it is hugely addictive. Once that box gets open. I love it. You can't not eat the rest as the king of cereals. Uh, so that will go into hiding before my husband comes home. And then I will have my bowl of crackling oat brand for Christmas. And I'll be the back person. of the box. I want to point something out to you. Just look okay. on the back of the box. We'll see. Do you see where it shows the the uh, crackling oat brand trail mix combo there? That yes. Is it good? I, oh yes. I did that and put it in like the little snack size Ziploc bags for hiking. Yeah, for backpacking. I took a bunch of that on a trip. So this is good. So it's it's basically you add chopped walnuts, almonds apricots dates raisins and some semi-sweet chocolate morsels yeah and i don't care for for walnuts so i did pecans or you could do almonds or cashews or whatever that would be good oh yeah. good so that make, would be really good I, it was yeah just, yeah yep yep i just love this stuff so much so no i've already gone through a box in december ready. i'm gonna have to get some more that's the danger of pre-buying the Christmas crackling oat brand, though, but I've is that it will disappear. Family. I've trained my family. My daughter's like, can I have a Don't little like of this? It. I'm like, sure. <laughs> she asked me, though. She did ask. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Look who's you have to across it. my desk. Oh, oh. It's, it's, kitty. it's Peanut. Hi, Peanut. He needs a hug. This snuggle bun. He needs a hug. 
the family yes. i'm the only one home and he gets a little um he just he just wants he just wants to sit he just wants to to hang out and drape. <laughs> just wow. he wants to drape. i miss having cats so, you know and then the internet doesn't help because you see all the cute cat videos I know but the other day I saw a reel and it was like one of those things where the video's in the middle and then there's a caption above and mm-hmm. it was like feeding my friends cats while they're on vacation and then the footage is this, like a security camera <laughs> and then the guy's in the house and he's like trying to feed the cats and the cats are just like attacking him like just jumping oh. on him and like yeah. they'll go back and and then like you see another cut and they're just like Rawr! you know like jumping on him and i'm like yeah cats can be crazy too they can peanut is a very social kitty Mm -hmm. and it's a little bummed out when no one's home yeah 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 the kids are gone the girls are gone will's at work when everybody's home will peanut just be happy with anybody or does peanut have a preferred human i'm his preferred person Mm. he sleeps with me nice but he hmm he will take anybody but i miss preference yeah that's how our dog is our dog prefers my oldest child yeah. we'll just stay but i've stay learned to him. knit leaning back where he can have a correct angle to stay perched and he clings and then i can knit yeah so you have yeah he has to have, you know, surface area to be on. Because I have enough said surface area to make a platform for him. <laughs> and he enjoys that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So he's doing a soft little purr right now. So I'm not sure how I'm going to hold show you my knitting, but that's okay. We'll- yeah, because you have made, you said you made a... a decisive... Dramatic decision. Which switch up with the blanket project yes so if people watch back yesterday you'll see i had some it was a pretty big shift in color so my daughter who this is for my daughter i mean this is for her for her go to college blankie next fall Mm -hmm. her dorm room throw so i mean it's really up to her right because it was it's her thing so i was gonna knit it and she would just decide if she liked it but then the more we got into it the more she's like I, you know, since you're going to net every day on the channel, I, she wants it to be for her. So I'm like, okay. So we talked about it. We looked at it. We had family dinner table knitting discussion, which means everyone weighs in. Uh Yeah. The intended recipient, plus my husband, my mother and I, (laughs) and we all decided that this, just this, this particular, okay, we have to shift the nut here. Peanut meat there. (laughs) I've gotten used to like holding him like yeah. this. So it's like all, having a baby again. You just go about your life and just And he's happy. Anchor, you can see anchor. he's like Garfield. He's pretty yeah. happy. So we all decided that that it just needs to hibernate for a bit. Okay. Because she she did not care for this dramatic of a shift. She didn't the care shift. for that. Yeah. And she really honestly wasn't sure she liked the colors overall okay that's okay people have preferences it can be beautiful and not be her thing that's fine yeah 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 it's okay so it's just gonna hibernate for a little bit and i think that you know we're talking about your prerogative as a knitter and being the boss of your knitting it's okay to let something sit it's okay to do that and then just decide how you feel about it later because it's fine it's okay to frog it entirely it's okay it's okay. You're not going to hurt okay. your friend's feelings. And in yeah. fact, my view on that, not that you ask, but my <laughs> view on that is it's a way to honor your craft, to let it sit and decide what the yarn wants to be. Because right. if you're struggling with a project, you're really unsure, then why would you not? I mean, this is hand dyed, independently dyed yarn. I want to honor that yarn and make it, make it into something that someone's going to enjoy and not just be like, meh, you know, and that's, and you know, this, this happens a lot with mystery projects like this. And that's basically what you're doing. It's a mystery project that you've started. And the mystery isn't the pattern. It's the yarn. Right. And like, I had it last, not this last time, but the time before with Stephen West's mystery shawl, 
Right. Where I got four clues, three clues into it. And I was like, this is not working. This not isn't right. working with the yarn I picked. The pattern, whatever. But my yarn with this pattern is not working. And it's I just okay. pulled it all out. It's yeah. okay. It's fine. And, and what I'm, I may do that. And if I do, then what I'll decide is that I'm going to pull out each mini skein and then re-skein it. And then I have my collection of minis in a box. Like I have yeah. a, a larger shoe box, you know, that like big, my husband's big boots came in that has the, it's a nice shoe box. Yeah. Yeah. And I have all my minis in there. And I love that because if I, if I want to knit contrasting heels and toes, then I go yeah. there. There's then you have a good stuff. supply. You're going to find yeah. something that works. Or yep. if I'm going to knit a muscle burg and I want, I want to just go pick all the minis and make something fun. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's totally fine. Yeah. To do that. I so agree. here's what, here's what good she for you. Good for you, Jenna, for like, mm -hmm. and your daughter for just being like, let's be realistic about this. Yeah. Even though you started this on the channel, like you do not, there's no law. No. That you have I'm in to. I'm charge of my knitting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, most of the time. And peanut. How he, did peanut weigh in? That's what I want. He limits my knitting times. It is difficult. Sometimes my shoulder gets sore, honestly. He's heavy. <laughs> He's a chunky. I like how he's totally chill with you just being like, rawr, 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 and he's oh, like, oh no, yeah. he's purring. He's happy <laughs> because this is this is one of the first hoodies I knitted for myself. This is uh -huh. a brown sheep bulky, and oh, it's warm and he loves it. He <laughs> yeah. he's okay. So tell me enough suspense, Jana. Here's what we we're doing focus. instead. Here's what we're doing. Okay, we looked back at all my minis, and I had. The advent kit that I opened on the channel last year from Lauren, from a girl in her wool. It was a okay. beach themed thing and it was a gradient. Oh, perfect. Now then. there was a couple mini skins she didn't care for so much. And mm -hmm. we actually did. I have a pretty large kitchen table. We laid everything out and then she picked out, she rearranged the skeins to suit herself and what she wanted. Nice. And we didn't use them all because uh -huh. we, you know, calculated the yardage and how big did you want to have this? So basically she took a section of that group of 25 mini skeins. She took a section out of that, rearranged it how she wanted, mm -hmm. renumbered the little labels so that I would not get confused. Yeah, so you don't have to leave it on your table for 25 right. days. And put it all back in the bag with her handwriting, her renumbering. Nice. So I will still be knitting and okay. I will show you. Now I am probably not going to, she picked, I think it's either 20 or 21 mini skeins out of the set that she liked. Okay. And so I have just started, obviously I'm behind. I might yeah. finish by the end of the month. I might not. Yeah. It's okay. It's but I started over. <laughs> it's nice to start. Yay. Oh, that's nice. So is that a most of a first or are you on yes. to the second? Yes. And I need most to make, get a longer cable now. Yeah. It is yeah. most of most. Yeah. I have just a. Nice. You're almost there. Yeah. So watch on my Instagram. We can, we'll show it occasionally, but watch mm -hmm. on my Instagram, how my habitation throw uh, is progressing. Yeah. And I'm really glad because she picked it. Like it wasn't something yeah. that she felt like was. I'm doing it on the channel. So now she has to like, now you have to have it kid. Yeah. yeah. So yay. It's okay. Yeah, to, I love it's that. Okay. It's okay to change course. Yeah. I totally agree. And you know, like three years ago, maybe I probably wouldn't have, I would have been like, I have to see this through. I said I was going to do it. And so I really like admire that you're just like, it's not working. Let's do something else. Yeah. I mean, I want her to be happy. Right. Yeah. This is her good point. That's the point. Yeah, it's yeah. her good college blankie, and it's not a surprise. So I want her to be happy. And yeah, of course, yeah, you know, funny. Peanut. We want Peanut to be happy. <laughs> okay, so it's day ten. It's day ten, which means for me, it's a pattern day. So we have these are the colors. Let me stick my finger in them all. Those are the colors Ooh. for the project from Uradale. So our interview for day 10 is Vivica, I, you say her Velu last Pillai. name. Vivica Velupulai, who, um, work, who is there for Uradale Yarns, part of Uradale Yarns, and she designed the pattern for us. 
But if you contact Airedale Yarns, you're probably going to talk to Vivica as well. Nice. So let me, I'm going to just pull everything out of the bag. So sorry, I didn't show the bag. It's our bag. Um, so we have first, this is our postcard for today. And uh, our little gift today is honey and hemp uh, lip lip balm oh. from a Mella, uh, maker there whoops, named Mella. Okay. Who does soap and lip balm and candles, amazing candles. Wow. Um, I just love her stuff. So that's your little gift for today. And what we're talking about today for Hogmanay is uh, the lyrics of Auld Lang Syne. Oh, interesting. So the lyrics of Auld Lang Syne are credited to Robert Burns, though he claimed he merely was the first to write the song down. Okay. Now, whether that's true or not is disputed because Robbie Burns, Robbie Burns liked to, you know, play up the heritage kind of thing. So he could have written this or he could have been writing it down. Who knows? Singers ask the hypothetical question, should we forget the good old days? That's with like old things. Okay. Before resolving to remember them still. This song has become the unofficial anthem of New Year's celebrations the world round. Traditionally, friends gather in a circle to sing this song just before the clock strikes midnight on Hogmanay, holding hands and gathering into the center with good feeling as the song ends and the new year begins. So, and then of course, there's information here about the yarn and about Mela, but this is the pattern. Let me get it open. Here's the pattern. It's beautiful. Yay. Yeah. So the pattern for today is the shoreline cowl designed by Vivica Velupulai. And that, whoops. There you go. Oh, move to your to... left, your left, your left. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So we have, so it starts and ends with lace and it has like a slip stitch color work being in the middle. Uh -huh. And she talks about her inspiration for this is the shoreline there on your Erdale farm which comes right down to a bow and it has like the colors of the water oh colors of the water <laughs> right and then it has the colors of some of the seaweed that's along the shoreline there they have this gorgeous deep orange seaweed um uh -huh. all together in that cowl so i will be casting that on today i'm very excited to get that oh on you'll have needle. knitting progress to show us as well yeah, so we'll see how far I get because it is a DK. So I'm curious how long this is going to oh. take me to knit. So, okay. well, and you know, what else you have going on in your life? But we were talking about Stuff. that when we're finished recording. We might just put our jammies back on and like knit the rest of the day. Yeah, I don't have to leave the house today. You I don't have to leave either. the house. I got new jammies last night and I'm like, I want to put my jammies back on. Those are I don't have to go anywhere today either, except for just outside for chores, but I don't have to get in the car and go anywhere. Yeah. And I have lots of leftovers. So I love that. Yeah. So Vivica is going in the interview. She uh, talks to us a bit about designing and about um, her, mm -hmm. her project here, but she's also there to study Shetland dialect. She's a linguist. And so yeah. she, She'll tell us a little bit about the Shetland dialect while. Yeah, I thought that was a fascinating, fascinating yeah. interview with her. She's great. Yeah. yeah. So that was really cool. On the tours, we go to Uridale Farm. So we have the Mackinac Way through Shetland tours. We go to Uridale Farm where they have their yarn room. But mm -hmm. we also like sit and have, they give us a project to work on. And we listen oh. to Vivica do like a full, like hour long lecture on Shetland cool. dialect and how how they can uh how they use knitters to study Shetland dialect um yeah it's fascinating and we eat delicious food and it's great what a uh -huh. cool way to spend the afternoon yeah it's a or great day. morning whichever morning but it's a great day we just have a great time there yeah okay so I am very curious about your next yarn okay I'm not going to tell you the state that it's from you can guess okay you remembered, you remembered not to tell. Okay, let, okay. Show me the sticker. This is day 10. And I don't think we're going to have a sticker discussion quite as. <laughs> oh, that's a fish. So is it Washington? This? Oh, I got it. I was just thinking of like fly fishermen, right? Or is it, I mean, salmon, would that be salmon fishing? Yeah. 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 
Okay, cool. Good job. Good job you remembering not to tell me. Good job me guessing. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is from uh, Wendy at Hazel Knits. We've interviewed her mm-hmm. last year, but we couldn't coordinate our schedule so much this time. Yeah. That's okay. I will link down below in the video description for the interview that we had with her last December. Perfect. So people can watch that if they want to learn more about her. And wow. Look <gasps> at that. Oh. Wow, that's going to look nice up against that like brownie one you had yesterday. Was that yesterday that you had the deep brown? No, it's green. Oh, it's that one. Oh, it's green. That's right. If you were to put that together, but you can see where mm, maybe not all in the same shawl yeah. with all the other things. So yeah, I think you guys made a good decision. To but I am so brown. happy to have, I don't have anything like this in my box of minis. Yeah, that's perfect oh, then. So I'm that's happy. Perfect. This is I love that color. It's it's lovely. It's beautiful. This is called their fingering weight uh 80 20. And it's 88 yards. Nice. So hazelnets.com. This is from Wendy in Seattle, Washington. So again, I'll link that interview down below. And we'll cut over to our talk with Vivica. Real quick, Jana, before we cut over, I just want to clarify this year, are they also going to make it possible to order the full sizes of the minis after it's over? Don't know. That's a good question. I may have to email Lisa and ask her that. Okay. I don't know. Something to find out. Yeah. Because that, that is beautiful. That is gorgeous. Yeah. There's a lot of different tones. See the the green, but see the, that just holds the yarn. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the purple and then the kind of magenta. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. There's a lot of different tones in here. So yeah. Beautiful. Pretty fantastic. Okay. We'll see okay. you tomorrow. Bye. We're, we're here with Vivica Velupuai, who is a linguist living in Shetland and studying Shetland, which is the local language of the area. She's also one of the designers at Uradale Yarns and designed the shoreline cowl for the Shetland hog many box, which she should have opened up today and had a look at. So Vivica, we're really glad to have you here with us. Thanks for meeting us. Welcome. Well, it's lovely to be with you. Thank you. It's lovely to meet you. Likewise, yeah. I've heard a lot about you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I say only good things about both of you. So oh, I feel okay. comfortable. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Lovely. So Vivica, we wanted to start by asking when you began designing. Yes, I um it's not that long ago, it's a few years ago, and my I've been knitting and crafting since I was a child, uh, crocheting, knitting, uh, embroidery, all sorts, weaving too. But I didn't actually design until a few years ago. So the very first thing that I designed was, and, and that's available uh, on the site, is the, the smooks. Smooks is a Shetland word for slipper. It's, uh, these are, <laughs> as you can see, they're used. And they've been used <laughs> for several years. Uh, they they stay uh, uh, intact for, for long. I've used them since, well, it must be in five years now, 17. So this is then uh, the chunky mm-hmm. that I felt mm-hmm. very hard, nice. the maximum kind of felting uh, in 90 degrees and, and the hardest spin and, and so on. And that makes them very, very, very thick. Yeah, durable. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Yeah, very durable, very thick, and and because of the nature of the yarn, they're also water repellent. So that uh, we had uh, with a child a little accident with a whole glass of water that spilt, and and nothing came through. My feet stayed dry. So so that was my first design as such that that I designed, and then these are my second design. So this is what I call the the, the Orkney hat which I designed for a, a friend in Orkney. Nice. Beautiful. Um, but there is no pattern for that. <laughs> there are no. <laughs> I was going to say that one looks new to me, but that would explain it. No, it's, it's been in Orkney for a while. And uh, <laughs> come back. And then the second one was this, which I did completely freehand. The Orkney half I actually designed, as in I sat and planned. But this I did completely freehand with... Uh, end of line 
sun bleached leftover yarns and there are no notes for that at all she's just so, winging it Vivica, you're teasing us about that <laughs> so be so like Vivica, just wing it <laughs> just wing it just well, yeah, you can you can do that. Anyone can do that. Uh, that's the that's the nature of, of wool, really. You can always uh, you can always spread, as it's called in Shetland. You can always rip up, yeah, and start up. And uh, you know, there's a, the, it shouldn't be seen as a failure. It's a learning curve. Oh yes, know? yeah. Uh, I'm not afraid to rip. I'm not afraid yeah. to rip. <laughs> I think it's uh, well. The Shetland ladies here actually say that if you haven't spread your piece, they'd like to know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Can you tell us so a little yeah. about? Can you tell us about the inspiration for your shoreline cowl design? Yes. Well, it is the shoreline, literally. It's the shoreline that I sit and, and see uh, out of this window. That's the Sunday Banks um, beach, and for that, I'll actually show you because. Uh, I have a, a set of pictures that kind of describes better than words. Okay. Why the cow looks the way it does. Before I do that, actually, when it comes to my smooks, my uh, slippers, I'll have to. I can't resist showing you the the ones that I made for the Shetland janitorials. That's uh, a legend, Aww. Shetland. <laughs> yeah, uh, Anne will know that the Shetland jannies. They are they are just universally loved in Shetland and their logo is is a kind of a, a Viking style logo so I designed it. So nice. <laughs> Here's the inspiration for the cow. This is the shoreline that uh, is uh, down yes. to the west here. Um it's a, it's a it's a bony beach. It's a, a fairly sheltered beach. We're we're quite far in the fjord in the Vo. So this is a fairly sheltered area as it goes. Um, and this is a very typical beach. Mm -hmm. There will have been, in, in its days, there will have been fish drying here and boats coming and going and things like that. Um, and that belongs to uh, the, the area that the farm uses for, for the livestock. <clears throat> Excuse That's me. That's lovely. Um, the the livestock, both the kai, the cattle and the sheep, um, they know when the tide is out. And so they go to the beach and feast on the seaweed, which is extremely healthy for them. It's full of minerals and, and, and salt and, and all sorts of things. Um, so they use the beach too when they roam. And, and so there's cattle there as well as sheep whenever we have the sheep all, all year round and, and cattle in there as as long as we can in the summer half of the year they they ha still haven't gone in we keep them out as long as we can mm -hmm. um so that's that's the inspiration these are the colors of the beach this is a a spring kind of an early early spring day um these are the kinds of things you find on the beach the the very colorful seaweed um the shells and and all of that just mm -hmm. in a nutshell mm -hmm. so that's the inspiration that's it's easier to show yeah <laughs> it's lovely yeah when you first sent me the picture and said it was the shoreline cow i was like oh of course because yeah. we you do, you were kind enough to walk me down there one day and it was all the colors of the seaweed and the water and yeah. everything that we oh it makes me want to it makes me want to visit for sure well you did yes yeah remember and we went down with all the dogs and then uh, stood and looked at the water and then turned back towards land and there were all the kai <laughs> all the <laughs> kai were the, yeah they were like lined up on the shore watching us oh, and yeah. i was sort of like Oh, cows! And Vivica was like, "We got to get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> what breed? What breed of cattle do you have? Native Shetland. Okay. The, the farm specializes in Native Shetland cattle and sheep. It's okay. only that, and uh, yeah. And you know, they're they're small and agile, but they're also not they're not very tame. So they they are not cuddly. <laughs> the the <cry. laughs> Yeah, and I'm you know town girl who's just like 
cows. You're like, what? Oh, look at the cows. Let's get one. No. Uh, they, uh, they use their horns if they have to. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Vivica got me back safely, though, obviously. I live to tell the tale. <laughs> yeah, we had we had five dogs along, and they had things to say about the invasive guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, well, no, Vivica, if I if I remember correctly, your interest in Shetland, the local dialect there, the local language of Shetland, came about through your mentor, who's who first had her connection with the language um, at a knitting class there. Would you mind sharing this story? Yeah. So it's yes and no. My interest in Shetland actually came about through a line in the Shetland series. When I heard oh. that the first time, I reacted and I started looking things up and I was hooked. Um, but Gunnel became my mentor because she's the obvious person for anyone who, or was, uh, for anyone who wanted to study Shetland. She got hooked because of a knitting class. Now, she came in the late 70s with her daughter um, to take a Fair Isle knitting course. She was, you know, there was nothing linguistic about her plans. She just came to learn to knit. Uh, to knit Fair Isle especially and and as she was in that course she was uh, you know struggling and the teacher told her that she would have to spread that and Gunnar sat up and, and took notice and said what did you say because the word for ripping up in Shetland is exactly the same as Scandinavian languages word for uh, to rip up spretta and and she just utterly reacted to that and with that first the way it is once you hear one thing suddenly your ears are tuned in with that she heard more and more things that were so scandinavian and that led to her long 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 research on the scandinavian element in shetland mm -hmm. now this has been known of course since before her research that there, there was a a very famous linguist in in the late 19th century that um, sat down and recorded or went around and recorded as much as he could of the remnants of Norn. So this is an, the Norn etymological dictionary of, uh, of Shetland. But she then did her research in the 1980s. So this is nearly a century later that she's looking at it and seeing what's left. And, and I am now here at, well, nearly two generations later, it's two and a half, one and a half generations later, and looking at Shetland, but not just the vocabulary, mm -hmm. because there's much more to a language than just the vocabulary. There's been a fair few studies on the vocabulary and, and a fair few mm -hmm. on the sound system, the, the sounds, especially the vowels. If you know uh, about language families, these lang English, Shetland, Swedish, uh, all the Scandinavian languages, so they all belong to the Germanic branch right. uh, of languages. <clears throat> the Germanic languages are very, very rich in vowels. So there tends to be a lot of studies on vowels. People notice differences in accents primarily based on the vowels. Right. But there's right. so much more to language than just the vowels. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at the language grammatically. I am a, a typologist. That means I look at global patterns of language structures. I look at what we get out there in the world, mm -hmm. um, what kinds of structures we find, where we find them, what kinds of patterns. And then, you know, you, you sort of worry about why do we find these patterns? That's sort of the, the what, what's where, why, in a nutshell, kind of questions. And um, so I'm looking at Shetland from a global perspective. I'm looking at the structure of the language and documenting the, the grammar as well as the lexicon and the sounds. So that's that's how her very long research came about, and that's how mine came about, and how they how they tied together. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, of course, we, we ended up both being linguists and knitters in no order of preference so that that was uh, <laughs> common ground she was my uh, she was my second grandmother that was uh, oh, oh, that's, oh lovely. that's lovely do you have books or or sources that you'd recommend for someone who wants to learn more about Shetland yes, yes I do and now I'll share again 
because what I would recommend for anyone who wants to learn more is to go to the project site, my okay. project site called IHEARD, which by default is in Shetland, but you can choose English. Okay. And we do that to, to show by action, uh, by action that, uh, go there in the English version, that Shetland is a fully viable language in its own right. You see, for the last, well, at least 200 years, for as long as there's been universal schooling, Shetlanders have been told that their language is, is wrong. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, the proper language is, is English, and by, by implication, and even by statement, Shetland is not proper. So we're showing by action, by action that you, you can use Shetland for anything and everything. You can, you can speak about uh, abstract linguistic things in Shetland, just like you can do that in, in Danish or... Korean or whatever other language. Mm -hmm. So everything we put out is by default in Shetland, but you always have an English option. And we're on social media too, um, both Instagram and Facebook, and we also have a YouTube channel uh, so that we give regular posts about the language. Now, here, if you surf around and browse around, you'll get information about the language, um, the status it is now, uh -huh. You will find the history of the language. Okay. But you'll also find that we've devised the spelling system for Shetland. Uh, because it's not taught in school, there's still no established orthography. So we've, uh, we've created one so that we know that we are internally consistent in what we do. Mm -hmm. this, this spelling system is based on linguistic principles as well as uh, community intuitions. Mm -hmm. and. With those intuitions, what I'm referring to is something called digital. That's when you have a marginalized language in the world, what often happens is that even though there's no, it's too stigmatized to have uh, a writing system. And because it doesn't have a writing system, it gets stigmatized, it's a vicious circle. But what people tend to do, what speakers tend to do is to use it in texting and in, uh, in uh, you know. Um, Email. Uh, and well, email not so much, but whatever you do on your gadget. Okay. It's, it's the difference between the keyboard, which is still a fairly formal act, mm -hmm. and the gadget, the handheld gadget. So whatever you do on your handheld gadget, that becomes much more informal. And so it allows you to, it's a safe space. So it's mostly social media, uh, so Facebook and Instagram, not so much Twitter, but even more, it's text messages like, and WhatsApp messages and these kinds of messages that tends to be in in uh, in the language, the marginalized language, which in Shetland then is Shetland. Now, that kind of gives that breaks the ice, so it allows people to get their eyes used to using Shetland or whatever language we're speaking about in a written form, because because the whole medium is informal. It's right. the spoken right. language. It just happens to be conveyed in a written form. So that's that's why it, it feels like a safe space. This is a global phenomenon. Uh, I should have pulled up a map. I, I didn't I didn't think about that, but I can do that later. So we've devised this spelling system based not only on etymological principles and sound principles, that's the linguistic side, but also on the digitalk intuitions, because this has been going on for at least a decade, if not more. So, you know, various habits have crystallized and mm -hmm. the context here is that everyone is rigorously schooled in English for nine years to read and write in English so the intuitions will be colored by the fact that that's the default written language in the society so here's the principles for that but if you go to there are other things that you can uh, browse and there's a there's a wordle for um Shetland we released that in February. Oh, and, nice! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I will tell you, uh, we released it on a Saturday evening at 10 p.m. And on the Sunday morning at 10 a.m., there were 500 players. So there was clearly <laughs> a need for it. Um, now we have over 16,000 players in, in 100 countries. Wow! So <laughs> it's taken off. Um, I'm going to just take a drop of water. We, in July, we released the Spectionary, which is the first 
online interactive dictionary um, where Shetlanders, anyone who's a Shetland speaker can input their own information. So what we're hoping for is that a lot of people will record their voices for any given entry. Um, nice. For non-speakers, you can still you can still search in English. Okay. But for speakers, so you can type in an English word and you can get all those uh, entries where that word um, appears in the definition. But for Shetlanders, you can record your voice and you can add definitions or add words or add your preferred spelling or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, this also happens to be the biggest dictionary since that Jakob Jakobson one that I mentioned in in the late 19th century. The rotating diamond here is actually a new feature that we'll be launching on, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, a place where we will publish articles, non-fiction articles by Shetlanders in Shetland, contemporary issues or things like that. So, <clears throat> so that um, will be live by the time this recording airs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good then. Yeah, so that's we're, we're going to launch that. The idea is to launch it on Sunday. Um, and the reason is, again, to show by action that you can you can use this language for anything. Right. Uh, whatever you can speak about, you can also write about in this language. The only the hurdle is that no one has received schooling in this language. Mm -hmm. Now, little by little, and in very small steps, we're building up a small corpus to show We've got all this non-fiction in Shetland. Explain to us why we can't have school books in Shetland. Mm -hmm. Because there's no linguistic reason for it. So this mm -hmm. is, um, that's what that's about. Okay. And the topics range from um, historical things to contemporary issues. The first article out is actually about how the fishing industry is shut out of sustainability discussions. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's contemporary issues that are relevant for Shetlanders. Mm -hmm. um, but what I will now click on to take you to is that uh, you have this Shetland Grammar and Dictionary page. Okay. And you go there, you will get to our primer, which is continuously updated. We launched it in, um, came out with it in May, but we keep updating it. Now this primer is bilingual. So anyone who wants to learn the language can just down, all of this is available for free. The primer is there for free. You can download the primer and simply read right through it. Okay. For a language learner, I would, I would actually suggest start by reading the Shetland, then read the English because they're always parallel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you, if you work along with the primer alongside the, the Spectionary, which is also linked here, Okay. Then you'll have a, a very good learning tool um, because yeah. it will be adult learners anyway. So between Wordle, uh, the primer, the Spectionary, and then the Whalins, which are called Nuggets in English, um, that's not a direct translation, that uh, is a conceptual translation, mm -hmm. um, you'll have a, a fair bit of learning material. Right. And, um, yeah. Then the primer will also give you further references for, for more detailed things. We also have an output page where you get the primer, of course, but you also get whatever else we've uh, put out is all available here for download. Okay. Excellent. And, and presentations are not available for download, but yeah. And if anyone wants to like sort of get a taste of this, the I hear the account on Instagram will make posts uh -huh. and talking about a word or a point of grammar. And again, it's in Shetland first and then below it, it's in English. So you can read through the Shetland okay, and, um, you know, see what you can make sense of and then read the English. And what I find when, when I do that is that maybe like one or two words from that post will stick with me. So okay. then the next time when I read one, when I start with the Shetland, I'll remember, yeah. oh, like one of those words I remember right. and, and I just understand and it, it right away. Yeah, builds yeah. on itself. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
I'll, uh, I'll maybe stop sharing for now. Um, yeah, and that is really the, the way to go about uh, immersing yourself in a language at a distance is simply, you know, um, don't expect to understand everything uh, immediately and all the time. Sure. Just go ahead and, you know, the first time you'll maybe understand 10% and the second time you'll maybe understand 12% and then right. there'll be a jump. There'll, there'll be these le leaps so that suddenly you find that you understand much more and then there's a plateau you know that's that's how it works when when you when you learn new languages but yeah. um all of this is available and uh, um just make use of it as much as as anyone likes and we, we keep working on things but we do this in our spare time so there'll be bursts and and there'll be pauses uh, by necessity there are sure. also films there's a link to our um YouTube channel where we have films and snippets and things like that so that you can browse that. And speaking of films, there's also films uh, on the Uradale uh, website. There's a little bit of overlap. Those that are in Shetland um, are, are on both channels, but um, there are more films on the Uradale channel where people can see the, uh, these are all films that relate to language and place. So that's mm -hmm. why it's relevant within the project. Um, it's all from the Uradale um, areas, the, the hills and, and, and valleys here. And it's all about one specific thing, like a place name or uh, when we, the latest film was the Quiz taking in the Kai and speaking about uh, an element of uh, place names that has been misinterpreted. And, and so it's misrepresented on signage and so on. Um, so, yeah, so there's a, there's a fair few films, and, but they always relate to language and place one way or another. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. Vivica is one of the busiest people I know <laughs> with everything that you have it going on. It sounds like, goodness. Yeah. And the Uradale yarns and what you're doing with Shetland. I'm like, I don't know how she does all of this. Do you, do you, um, do you have anything you want to share with us about what's coming up in the new year? Well, um, we'll be giving a class, of course, Anne, in, in March, uh, how to, you know, learning to knit Fair Isle um, with the fairy cowl that you're wearing. And, yes. uh, and you're wearing the second colorway. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, where whoever takes part will also learn not only about the language, but also about the farm. Mm -hmm. We take kind of a virtual tour around the farm. Um, as for designs, I'm, I'm, I'm never quite sure. I don't really speak about them until I'm done because what if they don't get finished? <laughs> so, I understand uh, that. <laughs> a, bit, a bit of the same thing when it comes to I hear we, we tend not to uh, speak too much about ongoing things until we know that they're, they're, they're kind of, we're, yeah. we're sure that we got. But one thing I, I can definitely tell you that we'll be working about is a very exciting development, and that is that the UHI, that's the University of the Highlands and Islands, the Shetland College has uh, adopted a Shetland language plan, mm. which uh, came about in, in dialogue with us. Uh, we've been speaking for about a year, and, and then that was put to the board in July and, and uh, adopted in totality. So we're very excited about it because what that means we don't need to get stuck in details. What it means is this is the first uh, official body that actually gives de facto recognition to this language as a language in its own right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's quite uh, groundbreaking. It, well, it is entirely groundbreaking and, and quite extraordinary. So I've had a lot of uh, uh, correspondence from colleagues all over the world very excited about this because it's it's as soon as a language that is endangered, get some kind of official support, there's a lot of excitement because it's the first yeah. step to saving it. Right. And so we we'll definitely will we'll be working with that and, and taking that forward. Um, and we're also working on a, a textbook together with the Marine Conservation Without Borders. Mm -hmm. um, their aim is to bring out textbooks about marine conservation in minority languages in the communities where 
marine uh, conservation is not only essential, but is at a threshold because of the climate crisis. But the, the, mm -hmm. again, the, the locals are not involved in the discussions, just like the article right. that I mentioned is about how fishermen are not involved in the discussions about the fishing industry, which is absurd. Um, and, and the marine communities, mm -hmm. the ones that have been living in this environment for thousands of years, they are not involved in the discussions about conservation. That just won't, won't do. So right. the idea mm -hmm. about marine conservation without borders is that every marine community should have access to these kinds of textbooks in their languages. Sure. And, uh, and so we're working on a, on a Shetland version. We're excited to be part of that. We're the first uh, North Atlantic community that's part of that. Um, in fact, the first mm -hmm. kind of a global North community that's part of that. So definitely those two things. But then uh, a lot of the things that have happened in both in terms of design and in terms of uh, I hear the has come about through serendipity you know it's it's you can't really plan it and and i think that's maybe good mm -hmm. maybe yeah more. well people know where to where to keep an eye out for you now though and to to watch the progress both with your designing and with the shetland dialect yeah, so, yeah. We'll so all the, we will put all the links down below in the video description yeah. so that people can find that when and go and practice yeah, 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 that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah, and and I should point out that we do make a point of of referring to it by its name, Shetland, and no longer referring to it as a dialect uh, mm -hmm. because that has been used as a tool to um, kind of mi minimize its status. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know, yeah. you, you're just a dialect. Well, you know that that's a that's a linguistic definition that is so vague that uh, yeah. it's meaningless. Linguistically, it's different enough to be a language in its own right, and it's definitely structured enough. There's no two two ways around that. It's utterly structured. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we always refer to it as Shetland. Mm -hmm. Shetland. Right. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been Thank educational for, for sure and delightful to meet you. Lovely to see you again. <laughs>